Hey, what's up, guys? Benny here, and welcome to another episode of Benny's Boot Camp, where I have a 54 kill game for you from Diaz Biffle. His links will be down in the description, but I really want to focus on the end game for this particular video because he racks up 34 kills in no time at all from mid to the end section, which is an area where a lot of players struggle for around and I've personally been asked a lot of questions about how to perform better. So we get into the first gunfight here and you'll notice he's not, he's not using the growl, which is refreshing. The game has changed. People are now using M4s, Kilos, Bruins, nice, uh, nice variety of guns, but he picks up that bottom kill or using his, using his M4 really nicely, picks up the AR. He then hears some gunshots behind him to be able to pick up the second. Once again, knowing it's a mid range fight, switches to his assault rifle as quickly as he can, which is one of the things that you'll notice. And a nice little little jump shot there as well. Throwing this into your game plate is going to help you. Just like a little jump, throws off enemy's aim, makes you more predictable. There, I don't know what that guy was doing. He was, he, he was mounted and just didn't shoot. But a nice squad wipe from Biffle to start off this stampede. You'll notice he's now on 23 kills and there are 69 players left. Oh yeah, also 75.3% of you watching this right now are not subscribed to the channel, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on another Warzone video. He gets into another fight, starts popping off shots at a distance using that M4, uh, and his teammates have also got UAVs in, so he's able to read the situation a little bit. And I really want to point this out, because when you're going at those mid to end game sections, especially when you're going in with a gas, is you want to be checking your surroundings constantly because you don't know if an enemy player's got ghosts. So you'll notice he does this little jump, checks the, checks the alleyway and then can focus on the guy that he was shooting at in this direction. And he does it every time he pass, passes a potential danger point. Now switch to the M4, picks up the kill. But any time he's going towards a doorway, just like watch him, watch him. And this is something that every top player does. Every single one of them. He's just constantly looking left to right, left to right. There's a doorway there, checks it, checks the angles, knows his teammate's got the angle behind him based off the minimap. But, and then he's centering his crosshairs as he's walking around, doing that bunny hop as well. All right, so next I want to point out, you'll see he's waiting, he's dropping his gameplay down now. He's waiting on the circle's edge for his teammate to get in the UAV. Instantly knows that they're inside the swimming pool building. So uses the, switches to the MP5 to speed up. Sees, a, he, oh, hold on, hold on. This is interesting here. He's missed the guy come out the door on the top left. So switches to the M4 because he knows that's the sort of fight he's going to be into. Doesn't see the guy up top, and he's very lucky. He just drops down and gets the two-piece. That's a bit fortunate. You have to have some luck in this game, but doesn't go for the th first on the on for the first off the guys in the pool straight away. Use the MP5 because he knows he's going to be pushing. His teammate got the kill, but this is something you always want to be doing mid to end game. You've got to be. You don't want to just be rushing for the kills because when you down someone, they're going to push you. So he, he downs that one. Downs the second. Look, doesn't go for the first. Is expecting. The rest of the squads come towards him. So he's readied himself up for that. Checks checks that he's not got a self-res. He's able to do that. Then the MP5 for that nice little push to pick up that kill. It's what you want to be doing every single time in mid to end game. Okay, so they've now got a V set up. So Biffle knows exactly where the enemy are. So he's using that MP5 to close that distance down quickly. And it's something you need to do. He's, when you know an enemy player's location, they don't know yours take advantage of the situation. You can get easy downs just like that. Switch to the M4 because it's moving away from him. Didn't need to be up close. And you can just take people down so quickly and systematically. Very unfortunate there. Good play from the other team to identify the danger. And he gets the self res But he's got his teammate to come in and can mop up as well. So he's going to get out of there and just play it quickly before even thinking about engaging. Like the amount of people that challenge gunfights when they've not got full health, when you have that moment, is unbelievable. Having plates, huge advantage. Pushing into a building. So he's using that MP5. They're going for the res. Two very easy kills. Pops back into cover for that to get the reload off jumps in um, just in case there's another team at enemy player in there, which is thankfully there wasn't. Now, this is the area that I think that most players start to struggle with in Warzone. It's between like the third and fourth circle when the gas is closing in and you don't really know where to push because there's still a lot of space left, but there's a lot of teams that are all moving into a very small area. So you'll notice here, Biffle's kind of taken the top of train roof, which is a very strong position. He's close to the edge, but not quite in it. So he can get people that are being forced into the gas. Using that M4 once again, using the high ground advantage. Every time that you can get high ground in any situation, get it. He's left the body there to try and bait teammates in. He's seen that he's not got self-res, hops down. It's always a risk there when you've got to deploy your parachute because there's a few seconds that an enemy player can take advantage. And here is a key, key play. You can see it. He might not pick, he sees a vehicle coming in, but using the gas 
and where people are having to run at you is always going to allow you to pick up a lot of kills. So he sees him moving across, knows he's not going to be able to get a kill, so switches that MP5 for faster movement and his slide cancelling as well, so he can keep on tactical sprinting to get closer to the edge. He also knows this player is having to is going to have to rotate through there, so he's able to move around, uses that M4 for that long-range gunfight, and he, he has to move because of the gas. This is the exact situation you want to be in, and you're going to get a lot of easy kills if you're doing exactly that. Use the gas, stay ahead of it, and take players out as they won't have time to jump into cover. All right, now we're in the end game. Biffle has got his heartbeat sensor out and is just going to be pushing towards buy stations now because this is a stage of the game where buy stations become hot zones because everyone wants to get their teammates in or get their last bit of equipment for the final fight. So comes right behind an enemy player and is able to take someone out. Um, and he's hearing gunshots as well because he knows there's a big team fight going in. So he doesn't want to just blindly run across the road and get caught out. So he's playing this very slow, systematically with his teammate and he's just shredding people um, with that M4. It's a really nice build actually. Uh, I don't know, 100% know what it is, but it's a, using the red dot site, since the no stock attachment have, has got drastically nerfed, you don't want to be using that. Nice, perfect movement with the MP5 then to get inside. And once again, right, you'll see this, this is so important at end game. Just, just watch his movement, watch his movement. He's using the cover as he moves around the map. He's also slide cancelling, so he's difficult to hit if someone does have a position on him. And he's he's like moving his head, just spotting where enemy players are or could potentially come from. You have to do that at endgame. All right, so they're on the buy station. Now, remember, these are always danger points at this stage of a game. Here's some gunshots from above and a perfect turn on. And he, he's still throwing those jump shots in, even though he knows that he's got that. You play every gunfight in every situation as if, it, if they have an equal chance on you. Just quickly throws that jump shot in. Harder to hit for the opponent, and uh, it ends up being an easy kill for Biffle. This is one of the hardest things to do in Warzone, and not something I always encourage, but he's he's trying to push the top of one of the top red buildings. Now, he's got heartbeat sensors, so able to see him, and thankfully, they're not checking him. So, second he's up here, he has an instant advantage. He can very quickly take the whole team out without them really being able to do much. The hardest thing is getting onto the roof, but that was a nice use of using both his weapons for that situation, and he knows they were fighting somebody, so he's now trying to spot them, so he has the map position on this situation because he's got the gas edge, People are once again having to push towards him. And you're going to see this every single time that he will hold the gas's edge, uses that heartbeat sensor to try and find enemy players. And this is a weird design, this building, because normally you can jump in there, which is kind of, you can see, through Biffle off a little bit. But pushing the stairs once again, perfect movement upstairs. Now, what a lot of people don't necessarily think about is the, the potential angles that you could be seen at while you're going upstairs. So if you notice Biffle here, so he's checking the top of the stairs and then he's rotating right. So he's seen, so if we go back a few steps, he's seen that there's no one at the top of the stairs on the left-hand side. He knows from his heartbeat sensor that the person is likely to be on the right side. So he's moving across, can now see the entire top half. The only bit that he's been blindsided by is the back left corner of that build, of that room. So to the left-hand side now, but because of the heartbeat sensor, we knew he was on the other side of the building. So he's able to just like percentage-wise, gauge that he's gonna be here, push it up, use that MP5, picks up the kill. Something else I really wanna point out about Biffle's game and is something you really wanna be doing at endgame is notice he's always narrowing the angles that he could be shot from. He's hugging the wall, he's checking those points. So he's increasing the percentage that he's not gonna be shot. And like just the same way, look, checking all those angles, moving across, and not not dawdling and then straight away manages to see an enemy player come down knows he's gonna get pushed by the other players now second you get it down second you get it down on an enemy player and it's not a wipe be ready for the other team and for the second time this game for the second time this this like this this gameplay we've seen biffle do this right get shot from behind easily jump like kind of swings into it and takes the guy down from the roof. Like, that is a very, very difficult thing to do. Also quite fortunate. You can hear the footsteps. Pushes through, slides through the door. Here's the person drop down. Oh, hold on. This is this is going to be interesting. How does he approach this? Because the ga he's got the gas pushing him now. And one thing that you never really want to be doing, and this is something I would always suggest with Endgame, is you never want to be jumping off a roof um, in the open like this because it's very easy for you to get taken out. So he gets it down. And we'll see, he knows there's at least one other player. So how's he going to play this? He's going to go into the gas, shoots the guy in the air. See, that is what I'm on about. That is what I am on about when it is so easy. If he pulled his shoot here and didn't get the kill while he's falling through the air, which is some insane gameplay, by the way, he was 100% going to be killed. 
So that was very, very fortunate. He put himself in a bad position by going up onto that rooftop, um, chasing those kills. But gets the plates on. Doesn't go for the full three because he knows that the other player could push him. And if he if he cancels that plate, he's gonna get he's gonna get killed here. So let's just watch that again. So he finishes this squad off. Right, goes plate straight away, which is something very important. Sees the other guy. He's got, now he knows he's got a couple seconds here where he can get some plates in. Cancels the plate on the second. Use that MP5. Jump shots again. Right? You'll notice this. It's 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 the exact same. Every single gunfight. He's either jump shotting, he's either sliding, um, using the combination of his weapons, and like using the map, minimizing those angles. Like there, once again, he's just hugging the wall, slide cancelling. He's not running into the open to the rock. He's using the, the map around him, gets the high ground. And because he knows he's got a beam of a shot with the M4, hops on there, takes the guy across the map. Using the circle now. He's scanning the area. Now, this, for me, is quite risky gameplay. Because if you look at the minimap, he's put himself bang in the middle uh, of the zone, which means that if... People have set up properly. It's very easy for him to get killed, but he's checking the area, just trying to read the situation all the time. And he has managed to pull off the perfect flank here. Gets behind, gets behind to the side of the team, and he can he, he can get a lot of kills here if he does this right. So takes one down. He's, he knows he's got one down, but gets absolutely been there, and he doesn't have the self-revive because he used it earlier. So he's now 100% reliant on his teammates to come and save him here. And there's three, two other squads left. There's seven players left standing, so he knows... He's going to pull away here and get some plates off. No point challenging once again. And that is one of the biggest tips I can give you in Warzone for Endgame. If you've not got full plates, you've got plates, you've got a few seconds where you can pull away, plate up, take those seconds. It will help you in the long run. All right, he's got one of his teammates down. He's gone down again. This, this, this enemy team is actually really good. The way that they're playing this, they've got the whole, they're holding down the area and it's really difficult for Biffle to push these situations. Um, but he's got 46 kills. There are a lot of people left. His teammates dropping down. Will he go for the revive? That is the that is the real question. Nice. So, really want to point this out. Players, when they've got downs, will tend to try and push you aggressively. So, if, look what Biffle does. Is. He's got his plates, and he goes up. He doesn't sprint into it. He checks the area so he can then snap onto an opponent if he pu gets pushed. And checks the left. Picks up that headshot on that guy. And once again, he's not sprinting out. He's, he's side strafing. So that he can keep that line of sight for him, for him, so he knows that he's going to be able to get those kills. Now he knows he can get a revive off because he's not going to be aggressively pushed for getting those two downs. Other teams going to be a bit more cautious of the situation. And also, his teammates got some plates for him, which is great teamwork in end game will win you matches. Okay, he's checking it, and there we go, bunny hop, bunny hop. Learn how to do this. I cannot stress this enough. Right. If you've got it, it's really hard to do if you don't play claw or you've not got an elite or a scuff controller because um, jumping, aiming and shooting at the same time is quite a difficult skill to do. But if you notice, he jumps out and then he bunny hops. He uses the momentum of that to make him as difficult to hit and moving. So it's harder for him to track. It's harder for people to get consistent headshots on him. So he's going to have a faster time to kill overall. And now he's got full plates. Um, and he's in a really strong position now. It's a 2v4 situation. He's got 49 kills. I, this is this is this perfect endgame. Now, they've got map control and they've got the circle. So they know that that team has got to push them. So they're not going to push out. They're going to hold this ridge line and wait for, the, wait for the right moments to shoot. Wait for that gas to force the enemy team to make a move. Because... If they're set up, it's a 50-50 gunfight. However, if you wait for the gas, they're going to have to move out of their cover. They're not going to be in a position they're happy about. And you're going to be far more likely to be able to pick those kills up. Strafing to the side. Jump shotting all the time. All about making yourself hard to hit. Jump shotting does that. Same with drop shotting in certain situations as well. But using the curvature of the land, gets that down. That's huge at this stage. And he's got a riot shield. That is a that is a nightmare in this situation. <laughs> but he's trying to get those thirsts off now. And he's low on ammo. Also, a situation you don't want to be in uh, in uh, Endgame is, is, is low on ammo. But manages to get those downs before he gets clipped. And then C4 over the top to wipe the squad. Now, that is the perfect way. With, like, let's just check this out. So, using that M4, using this land. And 
every single time, always try and get wherever, and for those final circles, whatever the strongest bit of map position is, whether that's the high ground or that's like a little little ridge like this where the per the enemy team has to push you across open ground. It's a huge advantage if you want to find out where the best area is going to be, complete recon contracts. But honestly, that was absolutely insane. 53, I think it's 54 at the end of the, uh, the cutscene for Biffle, but 54 kills this stage is incredible so big shout out to Biffle his links will be down in the description make sure to subscribe if you're new and click one of the videos on screen to watch more Call of Duty Warzone content and I hope this video helped you out and I'll see you next time